What's up guys? In this video, I'm gonna break down how you can read between the lines and pick up on cues that a girl might be giving you over text. This is a big sticking point for a lot of men. And so I'm gonna walk you guys through three different layer reports or three totally different situations where I had to really read between the lines to have a successful outcome. All right, so let's take a look at the first situation. We're gonna go from easiest to hardest. So this one is gonna be pretty straightforward, you know, if you know how to, again, look under the surface. So, hey, trouble, she says, hey. I say, how goes thy Saturday? She says, pretty boring, to be honest. Friends cancel plans, so it's just been homework and Hulu all day. I say, we should change this. She says, while well, it sounds appealing, I unfortunately can't hang out this weekend. So when she says that, I'm like, okay, what is she not saying here? Well, let's look at the facts. Her friends cancel plans on her, so she's bored. She doesn't have anything to do. She wants to hang out with me, which is what she says, but for some reason she can't. What could be stopping her from hanging out with me that she doesn't want to just blatantly say, hey, I can't hang out because of this or that? Her period, she's on her period. So, okay, so first thing is I gotta, you know, bring it up to the surface, so I'll say, is the Red Fairy in town? She says, well, that was straightforward, but yeah. And I know, of course, that, you know, vast majority of girls, they don't, it's not that they, care themselves about having sex in the period, it's that they're worried that you're gonna judge them. So if you can make it clear that you don't care, then they're not gonna care either. At least like nine out of 10 tops. So I say, haha, I'm pretty good on picking up on cues. Fortunately, that never bothered me. She says, really? I feel like that probably grosses out most guys. I say, so the reason, just this text basically explains why she didn't say it yet. She didn't wanna gross me out. You know? and what, she didn't do that, selfish reasons. She's just like, uh, this is embarrassing, I shouldn't say it. But if I'm the one that addresses it, then she'll easily admit it. She's, I say, yep, it's no big deal. Just put a towel on the bed. She says, maybe tomorrow though, because I kinda haven't been feeling well all day today. Oh, poor girl. I say, that would actually work better for me. What time are you thinking? She says, um, I don't know, like seven. I say, should work, shoot me your number. So then the next day, you know, we text a little bit, a little bit of sexting. We meet up that night, uh, you know, we have sex, and then actually a few days later, we wind up having a threesome with another girl. The full lay report is on the website. But basically, let's take a quick recap of what happened here, you know. She was hinting at that she wants to hang out with me, but there's some kind of reason that she doesn't want to admit that is preventing her from hanging out with me. So, you know, I thought of all the reasons that it could be, well, it's not, you know, it's not her friends, it's not any of that because she said her friends canceled and she said she's bored. You know, it's not work or something like that because she would just say it. So, you know, really it comes down to the one thing that's left is her period, you know, that's the most common thing that it could be at this point. So I address it, that was it, you know, went to service deeper, pulled it out, and then basically from there I was able to get a positive outcome, i.e. a threesome. All right, next let's take a look at a totally different situation. So this was Tinder, and this girl actually opens me, and she says, hey, what are you up to? I say, finishing some work, how about you? She says, work on Sunday, that sucks. Trying to figure out how to make this weekend last longer. So that right there is a sign. Two things, first of all, she opens me, which by itself doesn't mean that, that much, but then she says, trying to figure out how to make the weekend last longer. So those two factors mean, okay, what is she getting at? Oh, she wants to fuck. But she doesn't want to explicitly say, hey, I want to have sex. You know, I'm horny right now. I went out Friday and Saturday night and, you know, no guy picked me up. You know, I'm sexually frustrated. You know, she's not going to say that. I mean, very few girls will. But she's going to hint at it. And she's trusting on the fact that I can pick up on that and make it happen. So I say, perhaps you can be my distraction then. So she says, hmm, that sounds fun. I say, what are you looking for on here? And to be honest, I didn't really need to do this. It was about four years ago, so my text game wasn't even as good at that point. I wanted to get her to address it, but I really didn't need to. At this point, I had more than enough information to go for the clothes. She says, meet new people and have fun. How about you? So again, have fun. What does that mean? She's not talking about bowling. She's not talking about playing darts. She's talking about, you know, hooking up. So I say, yeah, same kinky sex and cuddles. She says, kinky how? So I say this to kind of draw her in a little bit. Uh, I personally don't like to do the super duper fast closes because that leads to a high flake rate, you know, when you do two texts and then, you know, you're trying to go for the meetup. I have had that work in the past, but it's a suboptimal approach because it does, you know, increase the flake rate. So I like to get a little bit of an investment, you know, before I go for the meetup. So she says, kinky how? I say spanking, hair pulling, leaving marks, especially on your ass. And I say that also calibrated because she had a nice ass. So it sounds hot. I've actually got bruises down my legs from last week. 
<laughs> I don't know what she uh, she censored something. I think it was like some activity. I don't think I don't think she was getting at that she got railed last week. I said, cool, why don't you come over? Spelled C U M. So I feel like there's more enough information at this point for me to go for the you know the sex date, the fuck date, and you know have a high probability of it going down. She says, okay, about what time? I say, say 7:30. Says that works. I run to the shower real quick. Says five miles away. Hope you're not too long of a drive. I said, perfect, text me and I'll shoot you over my address, give her my number, and then she gives me her number and she texts me. And then from there, you know, it's very straightforward. She came over that night and we hooked up. But again, what happened here? You know, quick recap. Based on, you know, the first, you know, the first few texts, the fact that she opened me and then she said something like, oh, I'm trying to figure out how to make the weekend last longer. I figured out that she was very much DTF, but she was implicitly DTF. She didn't want to be like, haha, you know, I'm really horny, will you come fuck me? Like, not a lot of girls are gonna do that. So she wanted me to pick up on the signs, you know, she's hinting at it, yeah, I'm horny, you know. This is kind of like when you're on a date and the girl is just waiting for you to kiss her, right? But you have to pick up on the sign that she wants to be kissed. So it was the same kind of thing here, only over text. All right, now let's take a look at a situation that is pretty much the exact opposite. So there's a lot of screenshots leading up to this, but just to quickly summarize, I was in Poland, Match with this cute Polish chick, you know, went really hard on the sex thing, like it was very explicit, she was very down, and then we made plans to meet up, and so day of the date, this is where this kit starts. So she says, hey Alex, I think our meeting won't, won't go with a plan you have in mind. Meeting with strangers for one thing, it's not my cup of tea. I thought it might work, but it won't, so I don't want to waste your time. So she gives me a long, you know, bail text. So, you know, this is just a complete 180 because earlier she was like, yeah, I can't wait to like ride that cock daddy. So, okay. So I say, where's this coming from? And then she doesn't respond. So I wait two hours and I try calling her because, you know, my logic is to get her on the phone, you know, I can, you know, figure out what her concern is. She doesn't pick up. So usually when a girl doesn't pick up the phone, I send a variation of this text. I say, I can't seduce you with my Spanish if you don't pick up because earlier we were talking about how I speak Spanish. Also, a quick side note, the reason I didn't say Russian is because I'm in Poland and most girls there, you know, not a big fan of Russians there, not well liked over there due to the history. So if I'm in that part of the world, I won't say Russian, I will say Spanish. So she says, oh man, no seducing. So she's just playing fucking hardball. So I say, Law, can you tell me what your concerns are? I liked how open-minded you were and was looking forward to meeting you. So what am I doing in this text? I'm rewarding her earlier behavior when she was cool and I'm really trying to like get to the root concern. So at this point, you know, when she says, uh, I think our meeting won't go with a plan, meeting strangers not my cup of tea, I know that's not the real reason. I know there's something that's going on underneath that. But I have to figure out what exactly it is. So it could be a few things, right? So it's not necessarily, you know, like with the, with the uh, first example, it's like, yes, yeah, obviously, more or less obviously her period. I don't really know. It could be any number of things, right? So I need to figure out which one it is. So she says, we didn't talk much, so you can't tell if I'm open-minded and it's not equal to sexually open. I want to meet but I'm not interested in having sex with a stranger, so I don't want to waste her time with a smiley face. Okay, so here, you know, she still doesn't give me much. She's still sticking to the cover story. So I say, do you suddenly hate sex or something? She says, yes, such a big turn off in my life with a winky face. I say, let's be honest. You were super down yesterday and this morning, and you're doing complete 180. It's totally normal to get cold feet or get a little nervous. So basically, in the past few texts, she wasn't really, you know, telling me what exactly is concerning her, like why she's bailing. So here what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna throw all the possibilities out there. So, you know, as good as I am at picking up on cues, I don't know if this is because she got cold feet. I don't know if this is because she's worried that she's gonna get judged. I don't know if it's because, you know, she got fucked last night and you know the guy was mean to her and now she doesn't wanna meet up with anyone. Like, I don't know what the actual story is. So I'm just gonna throw things out there. So uh, I say uh, it's totally normal to get cold feet or get a little nervous. She says it was yesterday. I am not today, so that's not it. Through the dark, dark doesn't land. Go for the next one. Are you worried about being judged or me thinking you are easy? Which might have been the one I should have gone with first because we're in Poland and there's like a huge slut shaming culture there. So, you know, it's very common for something like that to happen. She says, none of it, it's just not what I do. Okay, so she, does, she was super sexual earlier, but now she changed her mind, but she didn't get cold feet and she's not worried about being judged. What else could it be? And I get this like gut feeling like maybe she is a virgin and she was, you know, really looking forward to losing her virginity. And now that could explain, you know, why she was super sexual, but now she's worried that her first time is not going to be a good experience. So I say, 
so you are a virgin. And she just does dot, dot, dot. I knew we fucking hit the bullseye. So I say, it's okay if you are. She says, will you be gentle with me? There we go. Start turning around. I say, yes, I can be. She says, oh man. I say, let's chat on the phone for a minute or two. She says, okay, with a smiley face. So I call her. We actually chat on the phone for like half an hour, you know, spend the first 10, 20 minutes just, you know, building comfort, you know, shooting the shit. Then, you know, bring up the virgin thing. And lo and behold, yes, she's worried that, you know, her first time is not going to be good. So I know, you know, the typical virgin concerns, like they don't want the first time to suck. They don't want the guy to be pushy. They don't want the guy to be, you know, needy. They don't want the guy to just give them a bad experience. So I basically conveyed to her that, you know, she's not going to get any better experience, especially not living in fucking Poland than with me. And, you know, she, you know, once she gets more comfortable and she sees the logic in that, you know, we make plans. She comes over that night, as planned. So there it's, I guess we'll be in 15 minutes. So she comes over and then, you know, we shoot the shit for like an hour or two because, you know, she was a lot more on the shot side and eventually wound up having sex. And, you know, I took her virginity. Now, as a quick side note, uh, in case some guys are wondering, watching this, I'm thinking, fucking awesome. Generally, I'm really not a big fan of uh, hooking up with virgins. Uh, first of all, the sex is typically not that good. Uh, I've just found that from experience. I mean, it wouldn't be because they have no practice. But, you know, this girl was really cute and she had a really fun personality. So that kind of made up for it. So it was a good time. But actually, so what? let's take a quick look at this. What happened here? The girl started bailing on me the day of the date. You know, I took a look at the situation. One is that we had sexualized heavily beforehand. So that means I know that you know, when she says stuff like, I don't do that kind of stuff with strangers, I don't know, that's, I know that's not the real story because, you know, we had sexted so much. Two, she says it's not the fact that she's nervous, it's not the fact that she's worried about being judged. And three, we are in Poland, a country where a lot of girls, you know, stay virgins for a long time because, you know, typically, not to shit on Polish guys, I know some awesome Polish people, but typically, you know, it's just more of a conservative country and guys are a little bit more on the pussy side and they just don't make it happen as often. So for those, th for those reasons, I have a good feeling that must be the virgin thing. I say it, call it out. It is that, address the concern and then, you know, get the meetup and get the date. All right, so what are the big takeaways when it comes to learning to read between the lines? Believe it or not, you know, I used to fucking suck at this shit. Like when I was 19, my freshman year in college, or 18, I had a hot girl who I had a crush on, who, you know, was part of my whatever social circle, sleeping in my bed, and I still wasn't able to pick up on the cue that she was into me and wanted to fuck. So super embarrassing. So the first component of this is just developing, you know, this almost social intuition, spidey sense. You know, the more you do this, the more you will just start to anticipate what's going to happen next. Kind of like the way a good basketball player, he can spot, you know, he has this, just this pattern recognition that tells him where the ball is going to go next. You want to be that same way with text games. So that involves lots and lots of practice, lots and lots of reference experiences. The second thing is you cannot be afraid to take chances. I think this is a part that fucks over some guys and they're too worried like, oh, what if I guess incorrectly? What if I interpret this situation incorrectly? You will fail, you will fail a lot. I still occasionally fail, but you have to be willing to fail in order to get good. So you can't, can't be afraid to, you know, just kind of take things forward to take a guess, try to figure it out, try to call things out. Can never be afraid to fail. And the third thing is learning from your mistakes. You know, if you're taking a lot of action and you're not afraid to fail, great, but you also have to be willing to learn from your mistakes. So fortunately you have, you know, all my content, all my videos on text game, or for example, my mastermind group. But aside from that also, you know, you just have to be able to analyze your own interactions and be like, okay, I did this correct, but maybe I didn't do this correctly. And then be able to interpret this situation correctly. All right, hopefully you guys found this video valuable. And of course, the most important thing when it comes to learning to read between the lines is hitting that like button, hitting the subscribe button, clicking the bell for notifications. And also, if you haven't already, make sure you check out our Instagram at realplayingfire.com. We're always posting you know, our best memes and text game of the day, so lots of value there. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. And until next time.